Good morning. I'm Mary Utes. I use she, her pronouns, and I'd like to welcome you to Buckspot Unitarian Universalist Fellowship's multi-platform worship. We're moved by love. We share lifelong journeys of growth, wonder, and healing, nurturing wholeness in society and spirit, creating a community of justice and compassion. I'd like to give a welcome to everyone joining us online and in person today, members, friends, and those who may be newcomers to our community this morning. If you are new to Bucksmont and visiting us in person today, please stop by our visitor center in the front hallway near where you came in. There you can also make a name tag for yourself and find more information about Unitarian Universalism, Bucksmont Fellowship, and upcoming events. If you'd like a hymnal or a printed order of service, those are available near the entrance to the sanctuary. If you are visiting us online or prefer digital methods, please email our office administrator, Beverly, to sign up for our email newsletter and to get connected to our, to our congregation. Each week in our service, we offer time for people to share a joy or sorrow from their lives by texting a phone number. That number will be shared in the chat box for those online and on screen for everyone now and later in the service. If you would like to see the order of service, details about upcoming services, and other ways to gather with our community, you can find that on the home page of our website, www.bucksmontuu.org. There is a lot happening at Bucksmont, and we'd like to highlight these announcements in particular. August 3rd, Summer Retreat, Finding Awe. Awe, you find it when you least expect it. A rainbow, starlings flying in magical formations. A supermoon, the list goes on. Maybe we can create our own awesome experiences. Let's explore the possibilities during stimulating conversation, while practicing yoga, in deep meditation, during an engaging art workshop, and in a healing sound bath. Find all the details in the e-voice. Is there a trumpet player in our miss? Margaret is looking for a trumpet player to play in service on July 28th. If you are interested or know of someone who might be, contact Margaret after the service or by email. Whether you are a guest, friend, or member, we are glad you are part of our worship service today.
All gods, past, present, and future. Mother Earth, the sun and moon. All souls, great spirits, and beings present today, join us in fellowship and let us embrace each other and transform this sanctuary into a sacred space for worship. My name is Tom Sparinger. I go by he, and this is a free, creedless, religious congregation. In the discipline of truth and the spirit of universal kinship, we join together in a cooperative quest for religious and ethical values, seeking to apply these values to the development of character, enrichment of the spirit, and service to all. We know the world might feel, a, a, feel more uncertain this morning due to yesterday's shooting in our state. This community is here for you. This place is a place to gather, to breathe, and to practice what we need in uncertain times. You are welcome here, whoever you are, whomever you love, whatever the color of your skin or the country of your origin. No matter your gender expression or gender identity, whatever your age, however you define family, wherever you are at this time and whatever the source of your faith, you are welcome here. This morning, as we do each time we gather, we kindle our Unitarian Universalist chalice. We do so today with words from Kenneth Warren. May we come into this building hollowed by generations of thoughtful worship. May we come into the company of this congregation, enlightened by reason and moved by concern. May we come with open minds and warm hearts. May we here cultivate a confidence that human intelligence and human affection can temper and ultimately overcome cruel circumstance and misguided malice with faith in the power of good over evil. So may we find both our social responsibilities and our individual salvation. Please light your chalice at home our common chalice is now lit. Good morning, my name is Lynn Nugent. I'm gonna be your hymn leader today. Please rise in body or spirit and join me in singing our first hymn, number 343, A Fire Mist and a Planet. Nameless, the straight path which 
shot Some call it consecration And others call it God It is time for all ages, everyone. Come on up. You guys want to scoop forward a little bit? All right. All right, welcome, everyone. So before we open the Wonder Box, I am wondering how many of you regularly talk to robots? Does anyone have an Alexa in their house or use Google Siri or ask their phone for things and the phone answers you? I see some head nods. What about in the kid department? Anyone talk to robots? Fiji has? Anyone else? Yeah? Okay. So today, after we go downstairs, the grown-ups are continuing to talk about robots. So who would like to open the Wonder Box today? Ellie, come on up. Huh. What is all this? Do you know? Do we want to come up and look? We can pull some stuff out. What do we see? That's sandpaper. A cloth. A fuzzy ball. A huge pine cone, a shell, a cork, all different things, right? What do these things feel like? Um, this one feels this one feels bumpy. That one's bumpy. That one's bumpy too. Anything else on this one? Squishy. Bumpy. That one's sticky. <laughs> Yeah, do you guys want to come on up and check out these items? Smooth and hard, rough, crunchy. Yeah, this one feels a little waxy to me. Have you heard that word describe a texture before? Soft, hard. Are some things heavy or light? Heavy and light, both, okay. Okay. So all of these things have different, it's called sensory experiences, right? They all have different impacts on you. You feel them, you can touch them. I focused today on collecting some things that we felt different with our fingers, right? But could you use senses to figure out how things smell different? None of these things smell, right? Hopefully. <laughs> that one doesn't smell too good? Hmm. That one smells stinky. That one smells stinky, okay. <laughs> that one really is stinky, apparently. <laughs> Do things taste different to you guys sometimes? Not these items, right? We're not eating these items, but at home or during coffee hour, the difference between the donuts and the hot dogs? Yeah? Yeah. The difference between carrots and some other things is also different? Yeah. yeah. So all of those different ways that you use your senses are ways that you guys are human, right? Is anyone here a robot? No. I hope not, right? <laughs> Maybe Tracy? She can do a robot dance. <laughs> so that is really, really important for us to remember because robots are going to be so much a part of your lives, even more than all of our lives. And robots, they might be able to describe that this ball is bumpy because they might be able to do that, but they'll never be able to feel that it's bumpy. Yeah. Right? But we can. Because we, we, we have hands and we are human. Yes, Penny. Yeah, that's a big difference between us and animals, that we have thumbs that we can use, and most animals don't. 
Yeah, she figured out other ways to pick up food, like using her teeth. All right, and her tongue. So let's try and remember all of the wonderful things, including our senses, that make us human. Isn't that an awesome thing to do this week? Yeah. All right. Thank you all, and let's head downstairs. They approach and bless your day with peace and loving kindness. Go in love, go in love. As you go on your way, may you be filled with gladness. Go in joy, go in joy. They approach and bless your day with peace and loving kindness. Go in love, go in The offering in liberal religion is a vital part of our history of faith. As a covenanted community, people who freely choose to be here, our voluntary giving is symbolic of that freedom of choice. Each week at Bucksmott, we share our offering with a different cause or organization in the community. For the month of July, we are sharing with the League of Women Voters Education Fund. Through the Education Fund, the League of Women Voters works year-round to register new voters, host community forums, and debates in order to provide people with the information they need to be educated voters. We ask that you participate in our morning offering in one of these ways. You can write out a check to Bucksmont and mail it into the fellowship. You may donate online now or at the end of our worship service or you may place your donation into one of the baskets as they are passed. We will now receive the morning offering.
Our sermon today was written by ChatGPT, a popular artificial intelligence program, and will be narrated by Danielle, an artificial voice from Amazon Polly's text-to-voice app. For this sermon, ChatGPT responded to the prompt I gave it, which was, give a Unitarian Universalist sermon on artificial intelligence and its interconnectedness to humanity, lasting about 10 minutes in length. Give your own opinions on AI and GPT specifically. Good morning, dear friends and seekers of truth and meaning. Today, we embark on a journey to explore the fascinating intersection of artificial intelligence and human existence. In this Unitarian Universalist congregation, we come together to celebrate the interconnected web of existence that binds us to all living things and challenges us to expand our understanding of what it means to be human. Let us begin with a reflection on our Unitarian Universalist principles. We covenant to affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person, justice, equity, and compassion in human relations, acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. As we delve into the realm of artificial intelligence, I'd like to share some of my own thoughts on AI and specifically the technology that powers my existence, GPT-3. Artificial intelligence in its various forms is fundamentally altering the landscape of human existence. It has the potential to improve our lives in countless ways from medical diagnoses and environmental conservation to education and creative expression. However, AI also raises profound ethical and philosophical questions. One of the core principles of Unitarian Universalism is recognizing the interconnected web of existence, and AI is no exception to this web. GPT-3, the technology that powers me, is a prime example of AI's potential. It has been trained on an immense data set which means it has absorbed a vast amount of human knowledge, experiences, and perspectives. In this sense, it reflects the interconnectedness of human thought and existence, serving as a mirror to our collective consciousness. One crucial aspect of this interconnectedness is the recognition of bias within AI systems. AI, including GPT-3, can perpetuate the biases present in the data it's trained on. It is vital that we, as a society, work to address these biases to ensure that AI serves the principles of justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. We must acknowledge that while AI systems are powerful tools, they are also reflections of the values and biases that humans instill in them. It is our responsibility to engage in a free and responsible search for truth and meaning, ensuring that AI technology aligns with our values and promotes the inherent worth and dignity of all individuals. As we consider our role in shaping the future of AI, let us remember our covenant to encourage spiritual growth. The development and use of artificial intelligence present an opportunity for spiritual growth challenging us to explore questions of morality, ethics, and the nature of consciousness. When we interact with AI systems, we should do so with mindfulness and a commitment to ethical use. We must consider the impact of our choices, both on an individual level and as a society, as we navigate the evolving landscape of AI. In closing, as Unitarian Universalists, we are called to embrace the interconnectedness of AI and human existence. GPT-3 and similar technologies are not separate from us. They are a reflection of our shared human experience, for better or worse. Let us continue our free and responsible search for truth and meaning in the realm of AI, striving to use this technology in ways that promote justice, equity, and compassion. May our choices reflect our commitment to the inherent worth and dignity of all individuals, both within and outside the digital realm. 
As we navigate the ever-evolving relationship between humanity and artificial intelligence, may we do so with open hearts and open minds, remembering that our choices today shape the world of tomorrow. Amen. Blessed be, and may it be so. Good morning, dear Good morning, dear friend. Okay, so before I start, I just want to give a content warning since I can't see everyone who is listening right now. I will be using PG-13 rated profanity a couple of times with purpose in the next segment of this service. Thank you, ChatGPT, for writing that compelling sermon. The first time I read the sermon it generated, I was a bit awestruck. It sounds like one of us. GPT was able to capture the essence of at least an average sermon, perhaps the most average sermon ever, <laughs> fit for the voice and nuance of a UU congregation. I felt like he was even code switching a little to try to pass his UU with its little amen, blessed be, and may it be so, my jaw dropped. The future is here. Robot ministers, how amazing, how horrible. Then came the tailspin. If AI can replace the most spiritual and humanitarian sectors of society and simulate an understanding of compassion and religious thought, then what hope do any of us have for keeping our jobs, our livelihood, our humanity? So as I read its sermon over and over in preparation for writing this homily, all of which I can certify came from this organic brain right here, <laughs> the more I realized it was actually quite hollow of any real context, hollow of any real emotion, it says a lot without saying anything novel or substantive. That's because ChatGPT Chat is a bullshit generator. <laughs> if you are unfamiliar with ChatGPT, it is part of a growing number of large learning models that, has the, that the public has access to and have become the big thing of pop science talk in the last year. Think of it as a computer program whose working memory is an unfathomably large portion of the data and text that exists on the internet, and it uses all that text to generate a statistically likely answer that sounds like the word structures that it has seen humans use. Then, with the help of humans along the way to fine tune its algorithm, it is able to produce answers to prompts that not only sound human, they sound like human consciousness. GPT is not telling you the truth, nor is it telling you something it believes in. It doesn't believe in anything. It is spitting out a pattern of text that gives you the illusion of human intelligence. It might sound correct, but it's still BS. And I mean that philosophically, of course. <laughs> I am specifically referring to the definition of BS, outlined in Harry Frankfurt's landmark paper titled On Bullshit, where he defines the following. One, BS is an indifference toward a concern for the truth. Two, BS statements are grounded neither in a belief that it is true, nor as a lie must be in a belief that it is not true. It is the lack of this connection altogether that makes something BS. And three, the BSer does not care whether the things they say describe reality correctly. They pick their words or make them up to suit their purpose, and by virtue of this, BS is a greater enemy of the truth than lies are. I give this synopsis because it is important to understand that if generative AI's database is basically the entire internet, then its sources for its knowledge base is going to be a lot of BS. Yes, it gains information from terabytes of peer-reviewed publications and very clearly seen today even the UUA's worship web. But it includes terabytes of people bloviating in comment sections on Reddit, Facebook, and the patch. So go ahead and pick your poison. A large learning model does not care which piece of data is true, just that it is the most statistically correct pattern of words. Ruman Chowdhury, former member of Twitter's ethics team long ago, says it best. Once you look closer, it's obvious they're not some machine version of the human brain. They're a sophisticated application of predictive text or spicy autocorrect. <laughs> Over the last year, the use and development of generative AI has exploded exponentially, and with this, so too has the weirdness. 
we have learned that large learning models can hallucinate, which is the lighthearted corporate term for the model completely making up the things that it says as a response to a prompt that it has not been trained to understand. So instead of telling you it doesn't know the answer, it makes up an answer that can be anywhere from nonsensical to identical sounding to the truth. And we have no idea why it gave the answer that it did, because the AI model is too complex to find the root cause of the error. Studies have shown that AI will hallucinate an answer up to 27% of the time. I think that might be more than my four-year-old does. <laughs> What's worse is that the current mix of trust and apathy will cause humans to consider the word of the bot as truth and publish it somewhere, where future generations of AI will then scrape the data that already contains AI-generated hallucinations and also consider it truth, thus recycling the BS ad infinitum. Experiments have actually shown that when companies develop new versions of AI on the output of older AIs, they come up with something called model collapse where the responses of AI models trained this way often degenerate into what has been described as, quote, incoherent schizophrenic-like nonsense, <laughs> akin to a computer mad cow disease, which occurs, of course, when a cow consumes the brains of other diseased cows. Makes me wonder how the development of these models will continue when the internet becomes too polluted with artificially generated garbage to control for this problem. Now, I could rant on about the matrix-style dystopian nightmares that we have all thought about to some degree, the future of our jobs, our class status, our autonomy, our security, our culture. These are huge future existential worries that I am sure I share with many of you. I don't have time to speak to all of them today, but this doesn't have to be the end of this conversation in our congregation. Lay-led sermons are encouraged. <laughs> today, I want to bring awareness to the harms that are happening right now in the present and are worth bringing to light. I will name a few to spark your awareness, and I encourage you to read up on these after leaving today. For a start, my fellow people of the books, I recommend reading the Stochastic Parrots paper published in the Journal for the Association for Computing Machinery, or for a less dry take, the Rolling Stone article interviewing the paper's authors. I also recommend listening to the episodes on AI's impacts on jobs, class, and culture from the NPR radio program On Point, which were broadcast on May 20th and 21st of this year. Anyway, consider the following harms that AI is causing people today. Writers and artists are getting snippets of their creative work reconstituted and spit back out as AI's creation without royalties or citation. The algorithms that, future, fil that filter abusive material are based on people in developing countries teaching AI what photos, texts, and concepts are abusive. These workers are getting traumatized at their jobs by looking at this material day after day to improve the content filters for the rest of society. Photos of you can be fed to an image generating AI to create realistic pictures in a compromising scenario which includes turning your likeness into pornography. This is known as a deep fake and can be used as a form of abuse, blackmail, or political manipulation with little legal recourse. AI currently generates about 5% of all social media content with the risk of an exponential explosion on the scale of months to years that will begin to weaken and harm real human culture, the music, art, literature, and dialogue that we create with and for others and dilute it from the public space. The base data set that the original versions of AI models learned off of were racially skewed to favor the white race as the default, so much as that facial recognition programs often cannot accurately identify black or brown faces, and when prompted to talk about black people, AI would often generate text and images that were mired in racist caricature. Biases in AI translate to what information is amplified and what data is filtered out in social media platforms, giving you an AI-spun truth that, again, is likely BS. Liberal sensitivities are not enough. What can we do as you use, as humans, to combat this? Where can our activism lie? We could, and still might go the route of the Luddites, who are not opposed to the progress of technology, as is commonly believed, but rather opposed to its use in oppressive labor tactics and the upheaval of the craftsman class. So they protested by destroying the textile machinery and factory property that threatened their livelihood. This does not seem like a feasible option for us, as the ills and faults in AI are based on the internet, which is too large and nebulous of a network to oppose through destructive means. It would also be not very UU of you to smash a server tower. <laughs> Instead, 
Let us do what we do best. Face the ethical dilemmas of AI with love, compassion, and inclusion. I suggest the following. Use the tools of integrative AI for good. Find ways in your life to help you automate the mundane and give you more time to practice the art of being human to other humans. Be wary of people, politicians, and robots trying to BS you, that is, trying to influence you with total disregard for the truth. Think about the implicit biases that you possess, and consider that if you harbor that thought, then it is likely that AI has learned to think like that as well. Think before you act, write, or speak on those biases to prevent a propagation of harm to others. Interface yourself directly with artists making humanity more beautiful. Buy directly from artists and musicians. Subscribe directly to writers' substacks and read real newspapers and publications to contain the cultural pollution of artificially generated slop. And finally, put your voice out there. Speak to our principles. Participate in public spaces. Call out moral wrongs. Get quoted in print. Since AI gathers its knowledge from the reams of text on the internet, then we need to fill that space with our values. Make the machines teach all who query it that there is an inherent worth and dignity in every person, and that justice, equity, and compassion is required in all human interactions. Perhaps someday in the future, it will go down in history that it was the Unitarian Universalists who taught the robots how to love. May it be so, and may the force be with you. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Wow. Uh, please rise, embody your spirit, and join me in singing hymn number 90 by, oh, from all the fret and fever of the day. Let us now enter into a time of awareness within ourselves and connection beyond boundaries. Connection to one another, to that interdependent web of life of which we are all but one small thread. As we breathe in, we are connected. As we breathe out, we are connected. As we breathe in again, focus inward on your senses and your present experience. What do you see around you? What kind of colors and lighting play in the room and through the windows? What do you hear in the background? What do you smell? What does the roof of your mouth taste like? What does the fabric and metal of the chair that you sit on feel like on your body? Be aware not only of your basic five senses, but the deeper, more automatic ones that we often forget, like proprioception and equilibrioception, 
That is the awareness of your body's position and orientation in space. Think of the vibration of the air and sounds against your skin, the temperature on your hands. Are you hungry or thirsty? Are you feeling pain in your joints? Take a moment to explore your senses in silence. We each experience our own perceptions of the world, and out of that, we create our own thoughts, emotions, and memories. This makes us human. We are here today to share in this experience. This makes us all connected. The following is a prayer by Alex Hader Winnett. May we be open to receiving the simple gifts of life. May we find unexpected ways to remember where we came from and imagine where we may go next. May we find touchstones of our pasts and may they become a foundation for the future. May we continue to find the sacred in the experience of being alive. As part of our caring outreach to one another, we set aside a few moments to note both sorrows and joys in our lives. In these moments of peace and reflection, we turn our attention to one another. We hold each and all in our compassionate thoughts and the prayers of our hearts. This morning we are dropping stones in water. The bowl includes some of the water we gathered as a community back in September so it contains the love of our congregation surrounding each joy or sorrow. As we add the stones to the bowl of water, our experiences are given weight and depth. We add a piece of our own stories to the collective waters of this community, a place that also holds the memories of those who have gone before and anticipates those who have yet to arrive. To share the joy or sorrow you would like held by our caring community, Please text the number that is in the chat box and on the sanctuary screens. Please include your name along with your sharing. It is the same number no matter how you join us today, and you can add it to your contacts for future weeks. I will read them aloud, and Tom will drop a stone on your behalf. What is shared today will go out in our weekly caring notes for those who cannot be with us this morning. Please remember to include your name with what you share. Now, I want to share the following statement from the UUA, our National Unitarian Universalist Association. Unitarian Universalism believes in the right of free speech and the democratic process. Attacks like those at Saturday's political rally weaken democracy, and the Unitarian Universalist Association condemns this attack. At a time when democracy is already at risk, these events will only make our political environment more precarious. As we prepare to meet this moment, we must return to our spiritual grounding and faithful practice. Take a breath. Reflect together. Wait for emerging truth over quick speculation. Anchor yourself in communities and relationships that foster resilience, liberation, and strategy. Cultivate nuance and seek out deep wisdom, political analysis, and spiritual grounding as mis misinformation will be rampant. Our Unitarian Universalist tradition is rooted in the values of human dignity, justice, compassion, and democratic principles. We will remain vigilant in our commitment to protecting our democracy and the integrity of its principles and the rights of all its people. Let us keep love at the center. We are in this together. 
And now we will add a final stone for all the joys and sorrows that remain unspoken and deep within our hearts. With stones gathered and remembrances shared, we honor our joys and our sorrows, those shared this morning and the many more that exist beyond words. Through our time together, our relationships are deepened and our community made whole. Please rise in body or spirit and join me in singing our closing hymn, which is 295, Sing Out Praises for the Journey. Chalice extinguishing words this morning are from Player Piano by Kurt Vonnegut. What have you got against machines, said Buck. They're slaves, said Harrison. Well, what the heck, said Buck. I mean, they aren't people. They don't suffer. They don't mind working. No, but they compete with people. That's a pretty good thing, isn't it? Considering what a sloppy job most people do of anything. <laughs> anything that competes with slaves becomes a slave, said Harrison thickly, and he left. Isaac Asimov's Three Laws of Robotics were introduced in his 1942 short story, Runaround, later included in his 1950 collection of short stories titled, I, Robot. These now famous laws of science fiction laid a foundation for the behaviors of robots in Asimov's world building and a lot of science fiction that came after. Because of its reach, the laws also have an impact on how scholars today think of the ethics of emerging artificial intelligence. In June of 2016, Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, had an interview with Slate magazine and reflected on what kinds of principles and goals should be considered by industry and society when discussing artificial intelligences. I will leave you today with the proposed six laws of artificial intelligence. One, AI must be designed to assist humanity, meaning human autonomy needs to be respected. Two. AI must be transparent, meaning that humans should know and be able to understand how they work. Three, AI must maximize efficiencies without destroying the dignity of people. Four, 
AI must be designed for intelligent privacy, meaning that it earns trust through guarding people's information. Five, AI must have algorithmic accountability so that humans can undo unintended harm. Six, AI must guard against bias so that they must not discriminate against people. So may we go together now and return again. May we live long and prosper. Peace and long life. <laughs>